Hello everyone. Tonight I'm going to be showing you a little bit about multiplexers and hopefully clarify any confusion that we may have had. As you may have seen from class, a multiplexer is going to look a little something like this. It will have two inputs, a sort of selector switch, and an output. We'll call the two inputs I0, I1, our selector as 0, and our output why? So this whole box right here is kind of just a fancy pants way of saying whatever your input is for S is going to be your selection of I0 or I1. So let's say S0 is 0, well that's just going to be I0. And if S0 is 1, then it's just going to be I1. And then your input will be uh, logically maneuvered to your output Y. So let's go ahead and build this logic gate using a couple AND gates, a NOT gate, and an OR gate. It's really pretty simple. So we'll put, all, put our two AND gates here. And we'll have them going into a OR gate. Our output here will be Y. And here, our input will just be I0. And here, our input will just be I1. And here will be our NOT gate. And we'll have that going down and meeting with that gate here. And we'll have S0. So after this NOT gate, we will have S0, NOT, and then once these are anded together, we will have I0, S0, NOT. And after this AND gate, we will have I1 and S0. So that means our output must be Y is equal to I0 and S0, NOT, or I1 and S0. And let's go ahead and build a truth table for this. And I'm going to do the truth table uh, a little bit differently, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to have to do that in red, so I can uh, use black to kind of cover up some things. So let's say we have our inputs, I0, I1, and S0, and then we'll have our output, Y. And then I'll call this, when we yk, because for our known values of i0 and i1, and then our yu for our unknown values of i0 and i1. Um, that should be in the picture. So, go ahead and draw this. So, go ahead and build our truth table for all the possible values of our inputs. 010, 011, uh, one zero zero, one zero one, one one zero, and one one one. Okay, so let me rewrite this equation right here. S zero not or I one S zero. Okay. So if S zero is zero, then this S zero not is going to be one, and then our I zero is 0, so our y known, we'll call it 0, and then our s0 will be 1, and our i1 will be 0, so this will also be 0, and then our s0 is 0, so that means this is going to be 1, and then our i0 is also 0, and then our s0 is 1, i1 is 1, so we'll have 1 here, and we just keep doing the same thing and we should get something that looks like that. Now let's say we don't know the values of I0 and I1 so we'll go ahead and just put X's through these. It could be a 1 or a 0 that's why we use the X. So <clears throat> if our S0 is 0, then we don't really care about this uh, 
and, we only care about this and, because it's going to be a 1, and our output y is just going to depend on i0. And if our s0 is a 1, then we don't care about this and, only this one. And our uh, output y is only going to depend on i1. And since s0 keeps alternating, then we're just going to have our alternating s0 and s1. Or sorry, alternating i0 and i1. So this essentially proves that whatever S0 is, that's going to be your output from your inputs. So S0 is here, I0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. So I hope this uh, helps you understand multiplexers a little bit more. I'm going to make one more video tonight about demultiplexers. Uh, thank you for watching, and good night.